just seen is a daily morning event for most of us. Mother's query is an echo of the query in all our minds. The question is, what is so newsy on the radio and television which is not newsy in the daily newspaper? News heard for the first time on radio and television is certainly newsy. It's exciting as news, as information relayed instantly. Something like our modern Insta Quicks, like say instant coffee or two minute noodles, with no time lag between the happening and reporting of that happening. All India Radio presents Morning News. <laughs> in Tamil Nadu, 14 persons have been killed in a rail accident near Salem. Curfew will be relaxed in a number of areas in Jammu and Kashmir following an improvement in the situation. The depression in the Bay of Bengal is likely to cross the Orissa coast between Puri and Changbali by this evening. And in tennis, Conchita Martinez annexes the Italian Open Women's title. But how is radio placed in the new scenario? Well, radio takes precedence over television as it has more frequent bulletins. It provides the news excitement as it flashes the news almost immediately after the event. All that we read in the newspapers is nearly 10 to 12 hours, if not more, after the event. News flashed through the radio, on the other hand, is instantaneous and factual. Before going into the details of how to write a script for radio news, let's find out how the news filters from the place of the event to the studio. Where is the news gathered, edited and typed? The news reporter wires the news to the Press Trust of India, PTI, and the United News of India, UNI, which are the two leading news agencies of the country. The report is edited at the news agencies from where it is transmitted via the teleprinter to All India Radio. The information received by AIR on the teleprinter is transferred to the news editor's desk, edited suitably and sent to the news studio from where it is broadcast nationwide. Now we come to the main aspect of how to script for radio news. This calls for a script that is different from that of the daily newspapers. The news scripter has to keep in mind the time limit of a bulletin on the radio. So, the news items have to be kept to precise details and should be to the point. You must have noticed that the newspaper can accommodate sub-headlines and follow it up with a detailed report whereas radio headlines have to be precise and short. The news matter is identical, but 
its presentation and expression vary. Immediacy, accuracy, objectivity, brevity and clarity. These are the governing factors of a radio news item. As soon as a news item is received, is received by a news editor, his effort is to rush it to the studios for broadcast. But while doing so, he must see that the item is accurate, is correct. There is no mistake. Because once it goes on air, immediately lakhs of listeners listen to that. And you cannot retract that. In a newspaper, when an item is printed wrongly, and subsequently it is brought to the notice of the editor that something is wrong, then that can be corrected. But once you broadcast something, you cannot retract it. So accuracy is very important. Next is objectivity. Whatever you report, you must report in a matter of fact manner. There is no scope for editorialization. You cannot give your opinion there. And brevity, it is said, is the soul of radio news. The time factor is a very big factor in radio. You will have to tell whatever you want to uh, tell within a short time, within a given time. And for that, you will have to put the entire matter in a short crisp manner. Remember, however sensational a news item might be, the style of presentation should not be sensational. It should not provoke emotional or hysterical response in the listeners. The news report has to be informative, but not be inflammatory. Let me illustrate this for you. The news of the brutal assassination of a national leader is announced on the radio like this. We regret to announce the death of the national leader at 7.30 this evening. The tone is grave, somber and subdued. The newspapers next morning print the headline, Mr. So-and-so assassinated. The newspapers will make mention of suicide squads, terrorist outfits and other details of the assassination in the sub-headlines. Radio News, on the other hand, does not hazard any guess. Radio News gives authentic information and nothing more. The Japanese police had arrested the leader of Aung San Suu Kyi election with his recent mass gas attack in Tokyo. He has been charged with murder. The death toll in Sunday's train accident in Tamil Nadu has risen. Another aspect of Radio News script is that the words used in a radio bulletin should not make you run to your bookshelf to search for the dictionary. The words have to be simple, comprehensible and microfine so as to get into your thought process. At the same time, broadcast vocabulary should not use slang, no words that are commonplace and smack of vulgarity. Broadcast language should not startle you and make you wonder what the words mean. It has to be dignified without any frill or ornamentation. What about the news in detail after the headlines are over? Again, the same caution is to be exercised that the news bulletin carries only factual details and no subjective viewpoint. Radio language, unlike the language in a print media, is a spoken language. But here, the language that is broadcast is in the form of the language you speak, but it is put in black and white. You must write it. You can't just uh, go to uh, the microphone in a studio and speak whatever you like from your memory. Whatever you speak must be written. So the peculiarity of radio language is it is a spoken language in the written form. As such, 
at times the inventions of grammar are not strictly adhered to in radio languages. The language should be simple and crisp. The radio news is for listening. So naturally, whatever you speak, it should be clear, it should be simple, and it should be interesting. You are writing uh, the news, it should be um, in mind as to who you are catering to. Um, first and foremost, the language is very important. I mean, whether it is intelligible, it is comprehensive, uh, it has to be very lucid and uh, short and crisp, uh, interesting, and uh, maybe not really very, um, uh, not too full of uh, adjectives and something which the common or the layman doesn't understand. Because what is important to him here is what makes news and uh, you know what he's interested in is essentially what is happening around him, you know, and not so much the English or the diction or, or, or the pronunciation. So that is a very important factor, I think. Have you noticed the difference between news in the daily paper and radio news? Radio news does not go into unnecessary details or analysis of the news item. That is the privilege and prerogative of newspapers. Let us take, for example, the news item on Kapil Dev's world record of 432 wickets. All India Radio stated that Kapil Dev has broken Sir Richard Hadley's record of 431 wickets in Test cricket. The bulletin did not give details about Kapil's 50th wicket or 100th or 150th wicket, but confined itself to the event of the day that fetched him his 432nd wicket. The fundamental difference um, I feel is that uh, the newspapers go in for the written word and the radio is the spoken word. So when it comes to the newspapers, I think basically the correspondent or the editor is putting across his particular view and tends to get a little rigid or once you use the pen then you don't go back on that. Whereas in the radio it's a spoken word, so you almost communicate to the person on a person-to-person -person basis. It needs much more communicative skill, um, so to say. I think that is the fundamental difference. This takes us to the next point of ordering of the news items. What should be the order? Which news item should take precedence and which should follow? Let us analyze a few news headlines at random and try to order them. The headlines can be A. Kapil Dev's record haul of 432 wickets B. Mahatma Gandhi's death anniversary observed C. Economic reforms announced by the finance minister and D. A goods train derailed near Secunderabad. The ordering here is B. Mahatma Gandhi's death anniversary observed A. Kapil Dev's record haul of 432 wickets C. Economic reforms announced by the finance minister and D. A goods train derailed near Secunderabad. Even though Kapil Dev's record was of the greatest interest to the listeners, this was given out as a second lead story on the radio because of the importance of Gandhiji's death anniversary which is Martyr's Day, cannot be minimized. And now, let's sum up the points which must be kept in mind while scripting for radio news. First, radio news being instantaneous, there should be no time lag between the happening and the reporting of the happening. Well, the radio has various sources and um, we get our news from uh, the Press Trust of India, from the UNI, United News Agency, from uh, Reuters, and of course from a very efficient team of correspondents who belong to the All India Radio. An editor in charge in a particular shift in a newsroom usually gets his uh, news stories from different sources. For example, in All India Radio, we have no, a number of correspondents inside the country and abroad. We also get news stories through agencies like PTI, 
UNI, Univarta, Vasa, ANI, etc. Besides several government agencies, public sector undertakings, and public relations officers of other organizations, they send printed dispatches. Second, the news content on a radio news bulletin must be authentic and factual. Well, at the Old India Radio, we have uh, a number of bulletins, and uh, we begin the, the day with uh, the morning news, which is very informative, and uh, it has a lot of variation to it. Then we have a slow speed bulletin. This is for the war newspapers in the remotest areas. We have a sports bulletin. We have a Vikas Yatra. We have a radio newsreel, which covers all the important events all over the country. We have a special bulletin for the youth, which is a very interesting uh, bulletin as well. And a number of bulletins which go uh, to the overseas at night. And um, um, that's it. And, and a special bulletin I'd like to mention is a, a bulletin which is um, on developmental news. This is about all the development that takes place in the various states of India. So, and comments from the press. Um, we have Current Affairs, which is a part of the news services uh, division. It's a weekly program. Uh, a lot of phone-in programs on the news services as well. Third, the scriptwriter should keep in mind the time limit of a news bulletin on radio. So, he should be precise and to the point. As a news reader, I think the basic job is to read what your editor gives you. But sometimes you do have very innovative editors who let you um, restructure certain sen sentences. Uh, you can uh, use your words sometimes, but not change the news sense, you know. Basically, it comes from a pool, so there are certain guidelines which you have to follow. But you are given certain liberties of um, expressing it the way you think uh, it better, or maybe, uh, you know, better read or sounds better, things like that. You do improvise a lot of times. You see, sometimes there are emergencies and you know, there are flashes and you, you've got to have the presence of mind and you uh, keep your head on your shoulders and read it the way that it comes to you. Sometimes very funny incidents like some names come to you and then I, I guess you um, read the names with an elan, you know, uh, the way that you want to because you haven't standardized your pronunciation on that name, etc. Fourth, radio news has to be informative but not inflammatory. However sensational a news item might be, the style of presentation should not be sensational. I don't think the news reader should be flat and monotonous and without any variation. Of course, one can modulate one's voice. One does in stories such as accidents or perhaps somebody's death or something like that. But uh, generally, one doesn't get swayed by emotions because what you're trying to do is communicate to somebody what has happened essentially. It's more of a, a narrative rather than a dramatization of what has happened, you see. So one keeps a, a level tone with a little bit of modulation, but um, I don't think I have got swayed by, you know, emotions. Maybe at the rehearsing table, yes, with a little bit of argument with my editor, but never in front of the mic, no. It's a performance and you have to perform in a particular way. Fifth. The broadcast language for radio news must be simple and comprehensible. No commonplace words, no use of slang is allowed. The level of um, intelligibility is what is very important. What the common person understands. There is no point in trying to emulate other uh, radios or other um, agencies or any such thing anywhere in the world. One develops one, one's own style because you know your people. And um, even though you're talking in a particular tongue, you have to be professional in that tongue, but not to the extent that uh, somebody doesn't understand you. Or he's so taken up by the kind of accent and the kind of diction that you have, forgets the kind of news that you're trying to tell him. I think this is something very personal. And you have to make the listener feel that he, you know, he, he is important and he's being told something. And you relate to him, like I said, on a person-to-person basis, as though you're sitting in a drawing room and trying to tell him something, you know, not a barrage of uh, information, but 
something like an interaction, of course, a little impersonal though. Sixth, only factual details should be conveyed in a radio news bulletin and no comment or any subjective viewpoint. Uh, especially the two o'clock bulletin, I must um, observe something about this because um, this is a bulletin most often when Parliament is in session and a lot of political activity gets on the way midday. So this is a midday bulletin listened to by many people and lots of flashes and new things get onto your news table and while you're reading the news, you know, your editor comes and hands you something new so you read it at random and sometimes he sort of slashes things right in front of your face and you're reading a line and you have to follow a, a, a jigsaw puzzle and get back to the end of it and things like that do keep happening but then I suppose that's what uh, experience is about and you know. Seventh, the script writer while writing for radio news has to be conscious of time. Some of the other developments which have taken place in the newsroom uh, lately one has seen is uh, an attempt to modernize the entire setup which was very archaic and the language which was very cliched. I think uh, a lot of computerization has gone into it and uh, we are trying to build up a communications cell and we have um, a reference cell which tells you uh, any kind of information that you want. A lot of use in dictionaries and in pronunciations and in the English language. Um, it's very unfortunate though really that because very often we see on the visual media uh, one knows more about Bosnia as a governor uh, than one knows about an accident which has occurred about 100 kilometers away from where uh, you are. Or maybe the news from your uh, own native place is so far-fetched and you can't get it and yet the international news comes to you much faster. So I think these communication gaps and telephone facilities really need a lot of redoing in the in news services. Um, in India. Eighth, each news item has to be given time proportionate to its importance. And ninth, proper ordering of news items is an important aspect to be borne in mind by a scripter of radio news. Thus, radio news scripting should be authentic, factual, informative, precise and direct.